Hey future respiratory therapists, today we're diving all into diffusion capacity studies. This is part three of the four part series related around pulmonary function testing. And we talked about spirometry and volumes or, or, or flow of gas. So we're talking about FVC and FEV1 in our part one. In part two, we broke it down into lung volumes. And here we are in part three and we're talking about, talking about diffusion capacity. Now what you need to understand about diffusion capacity is that this is a single breath test where the patient is asked to inhale as deep as possible, hold their breath for 10 to 12 seconds, and then quickly exhale. Now what's measured here is the amount of carbon monoxide that was inhaled versus the amount of carbon monoxide that was exhaled. And the difference will tell you how much was diffused across into the bloodstream. And yes, you heard me correct. This is a single breath carbon monoxide test. Okay. Now, what we need to understand is what is normal and what is abnormal. So a normal DLCO, which is what we're talking about when we talk about diffusing capacity, diffusion lung capacity of carbon monoxide, DLCO, and the SB stands for the single breath method, okay? Now, what will cause the DLCO to be decreased? Any pulmonary lung disease, obstructive or restrictive. That's one of the big key points here I wanna make is when you're looking at pulmonary function tests, the DLCO doesn't really help you differentiate between an obstructive lung disease or restrictive lung disease because both can cause a decreased DLCO, okay? Um, they just can. Now, the other thing is, is that if you have problems with pulmonary blood flow, such as pulmonary hypertension, then we have an altered amount of blood flow passing through the pulmonary capillaries. This can also impair your DLCO. So while you may have normal flow studies and normal lung volumes, you may have a normal diffusing capacity and that would be indicative of a problem happening in the pulmonary capillaries, okay? Those are kind of the big key takeaways from this. Decreased diffusion doesn't tell you anything in helping you get to obstructive, restrictive, or whatever. It just tells you that the alveoli's ability to transfer gas from within to within the capillaries is somehow impaired. That's all it is, okay? Now, I told you a minute ago, this is reduced from normal. Now, normal, just like lung volumes, is 80 to 120%. Anything less than 80% is going to be indicative of your patient's lungs having an impaired ability to diffuse gas across the AC membrane. That's it. Okay, now what's on the board here is just an illustration of how this might be presented to you. Okay, now this is just a DLCO study. This does not have spirometry studies. This does not have lung volumes. This is just DLCO. This is the third major component of all pulmonary function tests. Okay, so remember normal is 80 to 120%. Anything less than 80 is impaired, and you know you're dealing with impaired gas exchange at the alveolar level, which could also be referred to as external respiration. We know external respiration is the exchanging of gas from the alveoli to the pulmonary capillaries. That's external respiration. And that's what this study gives us an indication of, okay? Now, when we break this example down that's here on the board, I'm going to grab my my calculator here so I can do the math, we see that we have basically three columns. And this is what's important to understand when you start looking at these, okay? You don't want to take, if this is the only column that's given, single breath DLCO, if this is the only one that's given, then obviously that's what you have to work with. But the key to the accuracy of this study is understanding 
that it has to be corrected for hemoglobin. If you have a, a patient who is predicted at 19.7 on a DLCO, but they are anemic, then your predicted value has to be compensated for that anemia. This is an important concept. You can't expect somebody to have perfect diffusing capacity if they don't have enough, uh, some people say trucks, or enough hemoglobin for that oxygen to actually bind to. So it has to be compensated or corrected to reflect appropriate hemoglobin. Now the opposite of that is take your COPD patients who we know they're going to have an impaired uh, ability to diffuse gas across. We already know that. But the key here is, is understanding that if we don't correct for their polycythemia, which is an increase in red blood cells and an increase in, hem in, in hemoglobin, which, which equals into an increase in hematocrit, then if we don't correct for that, we may have a normal study that we don't pick up on. Because if it was corrected for the increased hemoglobin, then it might be an abnormal study. So you want to make sure that this test is always corrected for hemoglobin because that affects the, the, the diffusion of gas, okay? So that's what you see on the board right here. You see very clearly we have DLCO single breath. This first one is not corrected. The second one is corrected. The CORR is corrected for the hemoglobin. Now if you notice the corrected predicted is lower than the original predicted. And the reason that is, is because this patient is indeed anemic. Okay, this person's hemoglobin is 11. Okay, now we understand that that's decreased, which is going to affect their diffusing capacity. So you can see their predicted goes down. Now when we do this math, we do it the same way we did the math for lung volumes and for spirometry. You take your actual and you divide it by your predicted. Now you probably don't need a calculator to know that this is not going to be good. But nonetheless, let's just use it. If we do 10 divided by 19.7, we get um, approximately 51%. When we do 10 divided by 18.1, we get approximately 55%. Now this may be confusing right here, but think about this. They have a lower predicted diffusing capacity because of their lower hemoglobin. But because of the actual volumes that were measured, their percentage is actually higher. Now, in this case, it's not enough to make it normal. This is obviously abnormal. Remember I told you 80 to 120% equals normal. And we're at 55%. But my point is, is that this is going to be the value that you use. If you ever have an abnormal DLCO single breath that's uncorrected and a normal for corrected, you're always going to take the corrected value, which is why and which is it signifies the importance of knowing your hemoglobin prior to performing this test. Okay, now this person has a 55%. This is the one we're taking. Why? Because it's corrected. 55% is their diffusion capacity. We know normal's 80 to 120. This is obviously decreased. Does this tell us if we have an obstructive disease process? No. Does it tell us we have a restrictive disease process? No. Does it tell us we have a pulmonary circulation process d d or disorder? No. It tells us none of that. It tells us that we have a problem somewhere causing a diffusion defect. That's all it tells us. And that's the importance of this video, is understanding that DLCO does not give an indication to airflow obstruction or restriction to volume. It just tells you that you have a problem with gas exchange.
okay? Now, when we tie this all back in together, this is all gonna make sense. But for right now, this is what you need to know about diffusion capacity, the information I just gave you. Understand when it's decreased, know what it tells you to be decreased, which is just that it's decreased. And we have to refer back to other values to figure out if it's COPD versus pulmonary fibrosis versus pulmonary hypertension, okay? And that's what we're gonna do in part four of this series. Stay tuned and best wishes.